First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. This little guy has lied so much go. about my record. You're the because liar. You're the lying, lying guy up here. I've given my answer, Lion Ted. I've given my answer. Well, you know, you started off over here, Jeff. You're moving over further and further. Pretty soon you're going to be off the end. Look your your he hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? No, they're not. And that's why you are our president. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the year in Trump. Or the year of Trump. Which is it? We took a poll and asked, the year in Trump or the year of Trump? Our results, the year of Trump beat the year in Trump by a tally of four to two. We asked six people, well, actually seven, but Lou Dobbs just shouted mayonnaise. And then he punched me in the face. Of course, Jill Stein is demanding a recount. But it really is the year of Trump. He put his big fat name all over 2016 like it was one of his gold-plated buildings on the Upper East Side. But in this Trumpy year, we learned some valuable stuff. One, the more you dismiss something, the more you exalt it. Rather than be persuasive, the media became a withering insult machine, as did Hillary, directing bile not just to Trump, but at those who fell for him. There was plenty to be critical of, but the cheaper laughs at the Amer average American's expense just pushed more souls to Trump, including those who saw him as the last choice among 17. Every time Trump ticked me off, moments later, Sarah Silverman would say something that would piss me off even more. That USA is number one, USA is number one kind of fervor is, uh, it's so scary. It's, it comes, it's like a, it's really my favorite combination in comedy, the uh, arrogant ignorance. You know? <laughs> but it is, it's just this kind of like closed, xenophobic, like, uh, we're number one and needing us to be number one. Number one in what? Juvenile diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why they lost. So charming. So do you think after Hillary's loss, obnoxious stars might stop telling us how stupid we are? No, because they're a <laughs> Number two. True, true, they are. Number two, principles came in second to victory. Our strident religious leaders just admitted that winning is more fun than church. Hell, Donald Trump referred to the body of Christ as a cracker, and not because Jesus was white, but the godly still embraced him. Accusations of hypocrisy no longer apply. If you hated rhinos last year, now you can love them because ideology is dead. And yeah, Trump stretched the truth a little, but when you're up against Hillary, the fountain of all falsehoods, accusations of dishonesty don't rate. Which brings me to number three. The Dems should have listened to us. Sorry, Bernie, America was not sick and tired of her damn emails. The emails exposed her arrogant deceptions. And get this, Benghazi mattered. People cared about who pushed the video, despite the media's mockery. If the left weren't so blinded by gender politics, they would have found someone who didn't somehow work <laughs> Anthony Weiner back into the picture. His package was always part of the package. <laughs> Number four. The identity grift no longer worked. It had a good run, four decades of calling people racist or homophobes or racist homophobes. But the boys who cried bigot finally wore out its welcome. The social justice warrior is now the official pinata for ridicule. They are the workout leotards of 2016. <laughs> yeah, I miss those. I'm wearing one right now. But America, do not get comfortable. Left-wingers, they're like zombies. They always rise from the grave, only in new clothes. Communists became progressives. Radical subversives became social justice ghouls. So the left will be back. And whatever they become next will be worse. Because if there's one thing we learned that they never learn at all. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's so bright. 
You can get a suntan just by sitting next to him, Washington Times political columnist and Fox News contributor, Charles Hurts. He's as sharp as a stick and like a dog he's always fetching. Guy Benson, downall.com political editor and Fox News contributor. She tells her old acquaintance to go pound sand. National Review reporter, Cat Tim. <laughs> and Stonehenge is his paperweight. TNA wrestler and Fox News contributor, Tyrus. All right. So we have, uh, I think we might have another little chunk of, uh, of uh, Donald from the debates. And I want to ask you what your favorite moments were. Do we have something here? We have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. Casual about the use of nuclear weapons. He's Wrong. went after a disabled reporter, mocked and mimicked him on Wrong. national television. He has consistently denied what is Wrong. a very... Such a nasty trust. woman. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. Charles, um, a lot to choose from over this year. What was your favorite part of the debates or the, uh, part of the primaries in general? Was there a, a moment that, like, sticks out? Well, I mean, really, there wasn't a bad debate in no. either the primary or in the general election. They were all fantastic. Yeah. And, and they were fantastic because of him, because he, uh, you know, he rewrote all the rules. I, probably if I had to pick the most, uh, the, probably the, the, the most important one was the second general election debate. Where he, the media had thrown everything at him for two weeks, and he had to go out there after being called, you know, all, all these things, and he had to go out there and just sort of keep on, keep on going. Yeah. And 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 he succeeded. But probably the uh, the mo the single most important was when uh, it was the first debate, the Fox debate, where he walked out and he was go he was out he he was cruising for a bruising, mm -hmm. and he went out there and he started a fight, mm -hmm. and he got into a, the, a fight. And then within minutes, he was, he was mocking Rand Paul for being 2% in the polls and on the stage with him. And at that moment, it was clear. There were, the, all the rules had been rewritten. Yeah. I also love the fact when that during that, was that during that debate that he didn't raise his hand. Yeah. That yeah. was like, that was like, he was and, like, why am I, why and, would I raise and, my hand? And, and, and before, he, before he didn't raise his hand, he, he looked up and down the aisle, the aisle. And, and, and said, well, they're all doing one thing. I'm doing something different. No, that I, was a, they, they must be wrong. He was the opposite of peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Guy, what did you? What was your favorite moment? I think one of his stronger moments came against Ted Cruz in a head-to-head -head where he responded to the New York Values attack. Yes. Because Cruz was trying to send a message: this guy's a liberal. This right. guy can't be counted on. He's secular. And it was, you know, what he was trying to say was something pretty political and typical. Yeah. And rather than saying that's not true, I'm a conservative, he said, "How dare you attack my city <laughs> and my state? How about our spirit on 9/11?" And I think Cruz was utterly unprepared yeah. for that comeback. And then my, my favorite general election debate moment was Hillary Clinton had this pretty devastating line of attack where she was going, and it's ironic now, because she was saying, this man may not accept the election results. <laughs> um, and so, you know, perish the thought. And she went down this whole litany of instances where he has claimed something was rigged against him when right. it didn't go his way. She said, even his Celebrity Apprentice show didn't win the Emmys, and he said those were rigged. And off camera, he goes, we should have gotten it. <laughs> And, like, it was such a serious attack from her, but when he jumped in and still insisted they should have won the Emmy, she almost started to laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, how, what can you do? He's a character. Kat, uh, what, what did you find? What, what was memorable to you? I think my favorite thing is every time he ever said anything, he'd always go like this. <laughs> it's the best face ever. I can't stop. I make, I've started making that face. It's, it's, uh, it's like he's... Okay, but it's like he's thinking with his lower jaw. Like resting bulldog face. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the debates were interesting to watch. My life is not as exciting now that I don't get to sit there with my little mug of wine, my yeah. little coffee mug of wine, and watch and tweet away. You know, with the first debate, we've got Rosie O'Donnell and her appearance coming into it, and everyone's yeah. saying, you know, that's incredibly problematic for him to have done. But boy, was it fun to watch. Yes. I'm more troubled by the mug of wine. I get your philosophy. It's, it's Our Lady of Shesh Jehovah mug of wine, so yeah. it's a religious experience. I'm sure it is. I think what you're trying Thank to you. say is that because you don't go outside and drink socially, you can drink wine and Why anything. would I have wine glasses? All regular cups hold the same fluid. Yeah, that is true. That is true and very sad, Tyrus. Very sad.
If I wasn't so scared of her, I'd give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite moment was, and he had a lot of moments, but as a guy who likes to get the last word in, I feel like yeah. Donald has the same disease I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hillary hit him with some stuff. And, and on far as political points go, she probably won every debate. Mm -hmm. But he always had a good comeback, even if it literally was the worst thing you could possibly say in the moment. And I've been guilty in that. If you've ever argued with a woman, she's going to hit you with a lot of stuff, and you've got to come back with, and he came back with, you nasty woman. <laughs> <laughs> and from a guy who's... From a guy who's dropped, like, you nasty woman, or is that the makeup you're going to go with? No, stuff like that. To get a, I'm just saying. I didn't say dance. I said you look fat in your pants. You come up with stuff like that to win arguments because you can't beat him on substance. Yeah. So. I think he was, in a way, a proxy for, a, a, and we didn't expect it, but a proxy for Americans because he, not only did he say certain things, he also would get bored. He would get fidgety. He would get, do his wise-ass comments. Yeah, it was like a 10-year-old at his sister's piano recital. Even after a debate, he even said, that was way too long. Do you remember that? He goes, oh, yeah, this is too long. We don't need to. People at home don't need to watch all that. Remember that? It was like the first or second one. He was like, just, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, they didn't need those undercard debates, by the way. Yeah. Those were sad. That was like the separate lunchroom for the kids with the peanut allergies. Yeah. <laughs> Really the debates were like the movie Office Space, you know, yeah. like the guy would come out and ask for tea forms and Trump was like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm going to change stuff next, go to commercial, let's move on. Like he just didn't, he didn't do his homework, he didn't study the, the long, boring political jargon that we hear, right. about, I'm going to, all the different eight points of things you're never going to do, he just wanted to get to the substance and get out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And listening to him mock a 14-point plan, can you believe it, a 14-point, <laughs> who has a 14-point plan? <laughs> and, and as a, ma he, uh, he's a master marketer, and as a master marketer, Marketer, his ability to know what you know what the customer wants, yeah, and and he figured that out so well, and and and, it, and not only did he did he reveal that he knew it so well, he revealed how like the media totally doesn't get the the customer yeah. anymore. Exactly. Last and word, guy. You played it in the montage where he made the little quip about she'd be in jail, and yeah. people lost their minds. The media's like, oh my God, he's an authoritarian who's going to unilaterally put people in prison. And I think most voters by that point had realized you don't take everything he says literally. Yeah. So the media never learned that lesson. And also, for all the you know, fainting that they were doing, a, 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 according to polling, a majority of the American people disagreed with Comey's decision not to recommend an indictment yeah. against Hillary Clinton. So it's not like he was way out of bounds. No. All right, we got to go. I keep thinking about that movie that, that it was a left-wing fantasy called Bullworth. <laughs> you know, remember with uh, 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 Warren, Warren Beatty? Beatty yep. they, they made this up, but this actually happened. It actually was Bullworth for the right, I yeah. think. It was a very unusual phenomenon. Ideology is dead. And yeah, Trump stretched the truth a little, but when you're up against Hillary, the fountain of all falsehoods, accusations of dishonesty don't rate. Which brings me to number three. The Dems should have listened to us. Sorry, Bernie. America was not sick and tired of her damn emails. The emails exposed her arrogant deceptions. And get this, Benghazi mattered. People cared about who pushed the video, despite the media's mockery. If the left weren't so blinded by gender politics, they would have found someone who didn't somehow work <laughs> Anthony Weiner back into the picture. His package was always part of the package. <laughs> Number four, the identity grift no longer worked. It had a good run, four decades of calling people racist or homophobes. First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. This little guy has lied so much about my record. You're the liar. You're the lying guy up here. I've given my answer, Lion Ted. I've given my answer. You know, you started off over here, Jeff. You're moving over further and further. Pretty soon you're going to be off the end. He hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? No, they're not. And that's why you're our president. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the year in Trump. Or the year of Trump. Which is it? We took a poll and asked, the year in Trump or the year of Trump? 
Our results, the year of Trump beat the year in Trump by a tally of four to two. We asked six people, well actually seven, but Lou Dobbs just shouted mayonnaise. And then he punched me in the face. Of course, Jill Stein is demanding a recount. But it really is the year of Trump. He put his big fat name all over 2016 like it was one of his gold-plated buildings on the Upper East Side. But in this Trumpy year, we learned some valuable stuff. One, the more you dismiss something, the more you exalt it. Rather than be persuasive, the media be- Number one, number one in what? Juvenile diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why they lost. So charming. So do you think after Hillary's loss, obnoxious stars might stop telling us how stupid we are? No, because they're a <laughs> Number two. True, true, they are. Number two, principles came in second to victory. Our strident religious leaders just admitted that winning is more fun than church. Hell, Donald Trump referred to the body of Christ as a cracker, and not because Jesus was white. But the godly still embraced him. Accusations of hypocrisy no longer apply. If you hated rhinos last year, now you can love them because ideology became a withering insult machine, as did Hillary, directing bile not just at Trump, but at those who fell for him. There was plenty to be critical of, but the cheaper laughs at the Amer average American's expense just pushed more souls to Trump including those who saw him as the last choice among 17. Every time Trump ticked me off, moments later, Sarah Silverman would say something that would piss me off even more. That USA's number one, USA's number one kind of fervor is, uh, it's so scary. It's, it comes, it's like a, it's really my favorite combination in comedy, the uh, arrogant ignorance. You know? <laughs> but it is, it's just this kind of like closed, xenophobic, like, uh, we're number one and needing us to be number one.